my senior defense. Let me start by saying thank you for taking the time to see my senior defense. I'm going to take you on a magical journey through my life here at Dozier Libby. My theme is Disney, and I'm going to start with a quote that really defines this school. Don't just fly, soar. My journey starts with who I am and where I come from. My family is pretty simple. I have my mom, my dad, and my older sister, Kristen. So I have a lot of photos from Disneyland because in my family, we stress the importance of balancing out schoolwork and fun. And my mom is a substitute librarian, and she was the one who got me interested in doing a summer volunteer job at the Brentwood and Pittsburgh libraries. My parents are my biggest inspirations. They both were the only ones out of their siblings to go to college. So college in my family is very significant. I also have a lot of photos of me and my sister because she has been through the Dozier Libby experience. So she has been my mentor and has tutored me, peered my papers, and gave me overall advice about high school. So how lucky am I to have something that, sing that makes saying goodbye so hard? Winnie the Pooh. So I have known Senna since seventh grade. We came to Dozier Libby together, and from her I met some of the most influential and amazing people. There is Angela, who I met in my freshman year, and she introduced me to Francesca and Kelly in my junior year. So I have many other, I have a lot of other friends from Dozier Libby, like I have Kalani, Jackie, Angelica, and Autumn, but these main four have inspired me and helped me so much to get me to my senior year, and I wouldn't be anywhere without them. Then there is my best friend in the whole world, Karina. We've known each other for over 16 years. We were next door neighbors and she went to a different school. So she doesn't know exactly what we do at this school, but she always gave me advice and listened to me <laughs> when I was complaining. <laughs> and I know I can always count on her. So if you focus on what you left behind, you'll never be able to see what lies ahead. Gusto, ratatouille. So what lies ahead for me is college. In the fall, I will be attending Las Madonnas Community College. After two years, I plan to transfer to Chico State with a major in child development. So in the process of deciding my major, I went back and forth until I chose child development. I chose it because I have a lot of little cousins and I've gained experience in handling kids. I found my love for working with kids when I worked in the kindergarten room at my former school with Senna. I also volunteered at the Pittsburgh Library where I did a summer lunch program for kids and I handed out lunch, I made the lunch, and I got to talk to the kids. So all of this led me to my uh, desire to give back to my, older, to my old school and become a teacher there. So I will be using the knowledge that I have gained from Dozier Libby and apply it to my career. Even though I'm not going into the medical field, I will be using the knowledge from the integrated projects because as a teacher I'm going to be teaching all subjects and I have to, and that requires a large field of knowledge in every core subject. So for my thesis, from the beginning, I knew the school would, challenge, would test me and my abilities, but I feel that my four years here have led me to grow and develop new skills. I learned to face problems instead of running away and was given the opportunity to show my capabilities and improve them. Before I came to Dojo Libby, I never really applied myself to school, I, but as an incoming freshman, I wanted to change that. I wanted to focus on, and, on school and make the best of my four years. My education at Dojo Libby consisted of collaborating and communicating with new people, uh, solving problems within my projects and the outside world, and utilizing my resources to pursue further knowledge to assist me in my future career. So, communication is key. How you introduce yourself is very important. Practice makes perfect. Ken, Toy Story 3. So this quote really defines this school. There's no way you can go through the school and not talk to someone in some project. We are constantly pushed towards working with new people in different projects. Through working group projects, you learn that when you have a presentation, it is crucial to rehearse and practice. So this is where I fell short. I had a debate in Mrs. Peter's 10th grade English. We had to choose a topic from a list of controversial themes such as capital punishment, abortion, and animal testing to name a few. I knew immediately I wanted to do capital punishment because I didn't know a lot of information about it so I didn't have any like biases towards a side. And once I had my research done and my paper was written, I never collaborated with my teammate because there were two people who was for it and two people who were against it. And so we never collaborated to make sure we didn't repeat information. I also didn't practice as much for my, the debate because uh, I went on a retreat the day before and I didn't manage my time well and rehearse as much for a rebuttal. So during the debate, I looked at my note cards most of the time. 
I didn't know how to rebuttal what the opposing team was saying, and I especially couldn't help out my teammate when he had to do his rebuttal. So needless to say, we lost the debate, but I knew that when it came to future projects, I'm gonna have to change my preparation habits. So Project Eddie is where I showed a change in those habits. Eddie stands for Envision, Discover, Design, Invent, and Execute. This project was assigned to Miss Nava's physics class. The goal was to create a device and that would assist a person who has a condition. We had to build a prototype, write an essay, and present our product tying in the subjects of English, medical ethics, and government. In English, we read the book Frankenstein, which would then be embedded into our essay, showing how we are not trying to fix someone or create someone new. Instead, we are trying to assist them with daily life. In government, it came into the essay and the presentation with the American Disability Act, which is a civil rights act that protects those who have certain conditions with jobs, discrimination, and regulations for shops. In medical ethics, we read the book No Pity and looked at different cases. Those cases helped us so when we interviewed our person, we wouldn't offend them with derogatory terms. We collaborated on different ideas and shared our thoughts until we eventually decided to do arthritis. I came up with the uh, massaging glove for arthritis called Good Hands. Throughout the project, my group was in constant communication through texting, Google Docs, and School Loop. When we were not able to meet up to build the glove, I stepped up and took charge and said, since I was in charge of the physics aspect of the essay and I had to buy all the materials, I decided to build it. I made sure that it was okay with my group first and everyone was fine with it because our deadline was approaching and we hadn't built anything yet. So as I built it, I was texting my group members pictures and telling them what was happening so that they can stay informed. And then I used new, new materials that I had never used before like electricity and circuits and motors. And the problem was our class hadn't learned about circuits yet, so I had to use all I had to research all on my own through the textbook, online, and I had to learn how to draw a circuit. So I didn't know about resistance and Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to resistance multiplied by current, or power law, which is the power of the circuit is equal to voltage multiplied by current. This will apply to my future career because as a teacher, I may encounter any child with a different background or condition, and I have to be able to handle it and know how to treat them the same as any other kid. This project was a big improvement when it came to working with others. In terms of practicing for a presentation, Be the Change really emphasized that. So Be the Change was a project assigned in medical ethics. We had to form groups and pick a topic that we could advocate and bring awareness to. Some topics were very sensitive and we had to be aware and consider the ethical parts of it. My group had gone through two other topics before we settled on body shaming. We had to do individual blogs, group blogs, a PSA, and a presentation that showed what we did to advocate our topic. I was constantly texting my group members and asking them questions like when we should meet to work on the project. We divided up the work equally, but in the end we decided um, you know, we should do the work on our own. But then I said, no, we shouldn't, we should take charge and say, no, we should work on it all together since there's a lot of work we have to do. So my group member Jaslyn and I, we worked on the ribbons and the posters that showed unity against the beauty standards and body shaming while Carlos worked on the note cards with positive sayings so that we can make our community, Doji Libby, feel comfortable about themselves. So I challenged myself and took on the task of creating the PSA. I didn't have a lot of experience with editing videos when I first came to Doji Libby, but over the years of Spanish and English projects, I now can create better videos. I know how to add transitions and music and how to add subtitles. Not only did I improve in editing, but for the presentation, I was making sure I was prepared. Our PowerPoint was in the form of a pecha kucha, which means each slide was only 15 seconds. So I had to speak loud, clearly, and fast. So I got encouragement from my friends telling me that I knew my information and that I would get, and I would do great. And I practiced for two days in front of my mom and in front of the mirror. <laughs> and since I practiced so much, during the presentation, I barely looked at my note cards and I felt confident that I knew my information. Be the Change was the most prepared I had ever been for a project. And this will help me in my future career because I'll need to be able to speak in front of large groups of like kids as well as their parents. And I'll be, have to be able to plan out and remember lectures that I'm gonna teach for that day and so forth. So around here, we don't look backwards for very long. We keep moving forward and try new things because we are curious and curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. Walt Disney. This quote represents not getting caught in your setbacks and instead pushing yourself to, do, to get better and succeed. 
In freshman year health science, our integrated project Good Eats was about choosing a nutrition related topic and informing others about it through a trifold board, an essay, and a, a video and a presentation. Since this was my first integrated project, I didn't know anyone in my group, so I didn't take charge. Instead, I let someone else take control. Our topic was genetically modified organisms, which is where the DNA structure of an organism or food is altered, usually in crops to protect it from insects or rodents. And this information would then write, in, I would write a lab report in biology. I had to research what GMOs were and how it related to the real world, such as its effects on farmers and crops, where there can be some benefits in nutrition and less chemicals in the environment. I was not the best writer when I started Dozier Libby. I didn't know grammar rules and what a thesis was supposed to be, so my lab report was not the greatest. It had grammar errors, spelling errors, it was disorganized with my ears just kind of thrown everywhere. So then when it came to the board, I knew, wanted to apply my creative skills, but I didn't want to be seen as too controlling, so I just kind of went with everyone else's ideas. So while the board is informative, it's just kind of cluttered and there's not a lot of color, it's just kind of boring. So for my first project, it wasn't bad, it just could have been better. It wasn't until my HeLa essay that I started to improve my writing and sentence structure. There is more treasure in books than in all the pirates loot on Treasure Island, Walt Disney. This quote can be said about the book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. We read this book in uh, Miss, Peter, or Miss Poland's 12th grade English. Henrietta Lacks arrived at John Hopkins Hospital to undergo treatment for cervical cancer. During the treatment, she had her cells, called HeLa cells, taken from her without her, without her knowledge, uh, since she was an African-American woman in the 1950s. Um, those cells were found to reproduce fast and were not were able to be kept alive longer than anyone else's cells. Those cells helped advance modern science and medicine, like the polio vaccine, and helping to map the genetic code of humans, which in turn produced a large sum of money, while Henrietta and her family had to suffer in poverty. My HeLa essay, or also known as my medical abuses essay, was assigned in both English and medical ethics. In medical ethics, we had to form groups and present a topic from, med from a medical abuse in history. My group presented Unit 731, which is Japanese human experimentation during World War II, where the Japanese put people in gas chambers, pressure chambers, and tested weapons and diseases on them. That information would then be embedded into my essay for English. My essay was based on the information of different cases of the medical abuse of the 20th century while incorporating the ethical issue of the book Gila into it. My essay was more organized than previous essays, starting with the background information on the first reported medical abuse and the history behind it. Then the body paragraphs were organized with what I had the most information about, starting with Gila, then Unit 731, then Nazi experimentation, and lastly, the Tuskegee syphilis study. My grammar and writing started to improve with the amount of time rights we had in English and all the practice and I started to have more peer edits to give me feedback on mistakes that I previously had not seen. Grammar and writing papers is gonna aid me in my future career as an elementary school teacher because I'm gonna to need to know how to teach my students certain English concepts, and I have to know how to use it so that I can effectively teach it back. You, can cr you control your destiny. You don't need magic to do it. There are no magical shortcuts to solving problems. Merida, break. There truly were no shortcuts to doing our IES project. IAS stands for the International Economic Summit. The goal was to choose a country and improve the standard of living for that country. At the end of the project, there was a summit where we had to form alliances, trade, and have a debate. To prepare for the summit, we had to look at our country's real gross domestic product, which is the amount of goods produced in the country. And it can be calculated by adding up the personal consumption, investments, government, and net exports. Uh, then the culture, education, economy, and political factors would be formed into a picto chart for the display board during the summit. We used our, had to use our country's real numbers of import and exports and look at other countries' trading exports so that during the summit we can meet our import and export goal. My, goal, my group chose uh, Sri Lanka and it was the perfect country for us because we didn't really know a lot about it, so we, had, we went into the project with like an open mind and combined our creativity. This project spotlighted my creativity and my abilities to work in a group. We sat down in class and I drew a picture of the board as we tossed ideas back and forth. I had the idea to add trees to make it look like a tropical forest. And another group member had the idea to add a temple at the top of the display board. 
And anytime my group had faced an issue, like when a deadline was coming up or we needed to meet to work on the display board, we were able to work together and manage our time. One part that happened was the day of the summit, about 20 minutes before we started, my group member had tea in her car and it spilled on the bottom of the board. So after some mild freaking out, we uh, solved this problem by having Raphael drive Angela back to her house so she could reprint several of the ruined picto charts. So I stayed at school to make sure that everything was ready and all we needed was the board. We became settled after and stayed relatively calm with about two minutes to spare. Um, at, as a teacher, um, I would need to stay calm in situations where students may act up or if technology acts up and I can't use certain medians, I need to be able to adapt and go to the next best thing. I, and since IES was such a rush during the summit, I know that sometimes there's no time to think and you just gotta go with the next thing. Um, also, in the end of this project, we became summit champions and won top cable display. So I'm ready to know what the people know, ask them my questions, and get some answers. Ariel, the Little Mermaid. In freshman year, I was quiet and I didn't really talk to my teachers or ask them questions when I was lost on an assignment. But in my junior year, I started to become more comfortable and I was able to talk to my teachers and get help. Um, I now seek out their advice regularly. In physics class, our first lab was the motion graph lab. This assignment was to use a cart and push it with force on a track. There is a motion detector at the end of the track um, calculating its velocity and acceleration onto a graph. Halfway through the lab, it started to get confusing. I couldn't find an acceleration over time graph, and so I went to my teacher and she showed me how to do it so that when I did a second trial of the experiment, I would be able to find it again. I would, uh, before, I would not have asked my teacher, and instead I would have just tried to figure it out myself or look towards a friend for information, but now I've gotten comfortable enough to ask my teachers for help when I need it. When it came to writing my lab report, I had to do a mathematical analysis. In the mathematical analysis, I had to find the mean or average using the device Loggers Pro. I had never really used Loggers Pro before because in the past when we used it in projects, another group member was always in charge of it. In this project, I had to be the one to set it up and record the data. Then I had to find the point of increasing and the slope, and which we use a lot in pre-calculus. And I had to find the slope using the formula of rise over run, which means how much it goes up or down over how much it goes to the left or right. Then I had to take the numbers from trial one and trial two and find the difference between them. In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun, Mary Poppins. In AP Psychology, we were given the chance to learn about ourselves through a personality portfolio. I had to take multiple personality and intelligence quizzes, create a soundtrack to my life, and evaluate my personality based on popular theorists. With all the results and papers I had to write, I had to put it all together into something that was creative and focused on who I am. I decided to do a model of the Hogwarts castle because Harry Potter has been a part of my life and it's something that me and my sister enjoy together. One thing I learned though during this project was that once I put my mind to something, it's really hard to change it. I was determined to do this castle even though I had no clue where to start. So I managed my time, I took all the required quizzes first and then started to build it. I used materials I had never used before such as clay and since I didn't know clay cracks when it dries, I had to use my acquired research skills and that led me to an arts and crafts store where I asked some people like, how do I fix this? I eventually used plaster, which I'd also never really used before, and it managed to work. It turned out very nice. This was one of the first projects I did where I managed to not procrastinate. I was able to focus and spread out the work to get everything done. This project really helped me to learn about myself, where I find out like I'm ambitious, loyal, and hardworking, and that's going to help me in my future career as an elementary school teacher because my students will be able to trust me, meaning I will be more effective and I can come up with fun projects for us to do and assignments. I learned that I am optimistic and I remain positive, which will help me to stay calm when working with kids who are rowdy, as well as keep them happy. Ultimately, as a teacher, you want to make a positive impact on your students. And I feel that after learning about my personality traits and stuff I've learned from Dozier Libby, I have the capability to do that. So at the end of my thesis, as I get ready to move on to the next step in my life, I can reflect on my time here at Dozier Libby, where I have faced challenging tasks that have motivated me as a student and as a person. Through learning how to effectively work in a group and connecting my classroom knowledge to the real world and my future career, I am seeking advice or assistance in deepening my understanding 
of difficult class material. I am on my way. I can go the distance. I don't care how far. Somehow I'll be strong. Hercules. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, do you know, do you have an idea what grade you might want to teach? I'm not 100% sure, but I know probably somewhere like fourth grade and younger, mm -hmm. something around that. Uh, so I guess my question would be, given your future career as a teacher and what you've kind of learned about yourself and about yourself as a student uh, and a person here at Dozier Libby, what's some advice that you might give your future students? I would really like would advise them to stay like positive through everything. Like there's going to be bad days. There's going to be days where you're stressed or you know you didn't do, do so well like on a test or a project. But there's always going to be another project or another thing to do that will make up for that. You just have to, not, if you get a bad grade, you don't want it to just end there. You want to keep going. English came into play because we had to do a, uh, a timeline and we had to research a bunch of information and we had to write it out like kind of into an essay it didn't wasn't like a full-on essay it was answering questions that we had to do for it and be the change was mostly medical ethics based but English could be applied with that Well, with art, I come up with a lot of like creative projects. Like I've done flags before. I made a fake grappling hook for a costume. So I feel like I can come up with like some like little fun art projects to kind of incorporate with like my curriculum that I'm teaching, and kind of like that way people are kind of ha like having fun and still learning. Yeah, I was gonna comment too. I, I still have the poster from uh, your artistic ability <laughs> podium in my class. And I was going to ask you, what was your magic moment during your four years here? I think probably with Be the Change, just that project in general was just really fun because we've done a lot of projects where we've, you know, write papers and did these projects and then we presented them. This one we actually had to like go out and like talk to people and, you know, inform them what our topic was and why it was so important that we were advocating for it. So it kind of pushed me a little. Because like I don't like talking to like strangers, <laughs> my friends know that it took me two years to talk to Kelly and Francesca, <laughs> so I have to have someone talk to me first, and then I can talk. So for be the change, I had to go up to people and like hand them note cards and tell them you know all these positive stuff about them. It was really a big change. <laughs> 